Salutations. It's been a hot minute, but we are back. In this episode, we provide a lot of movie news. Jules gives us another top five IMDb movie factoid list. And if you stick around to the end of the show, we have a special contest for our listeners. Just a heads up, we are wrapping up this season with only three episodes left, including this one. So sit back, relax, and just consume this knowledge. Welcome back. It's been a very long two weeks since we last uh, met with you guys. But uh, with that being said, there is so much news going around. We're not even going to mess around. We're just going to jump. We're right. not even going to introduce ourselves either. We're just going to go straight to it. <laughs> you, know <who laughs> that, you know who we you are. You know who we are. <laughs> you know who we are. So <laughs> we'll introduce as we go along. <laughs> yeah. So Jules, <laughs> there we go. what we got? Well, uh, what was on my radar in the past two weeks um, that I noticed is that Mark Ruffalo revealed in an interview that um, he and Marvel are actually open to the idea of another Hulk movie. Um, In that interview, Ruffalo also suggested that uh, it could be like an Iron Man and Hulk team up, which I always thought would be a great idea. Um, I thought they were going to do that for Iron Man 3. Um, I know you kind of saw a little bit of the Hulk towards the end of that, but um, I'm excited if that's the route that they're going to take. Um, I thought that Iron Man and the Hulk are like peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, they completely took over the Avengers movie. So, I mean, <laughs> like, why not? Uh, they have great chemistry together. They were in Zodiac. So, um, mm-hmm. another good movie to check out. Uh, I'm totally on board with it. I thought Mark Ruffalo did a great job as a Hulk, even though, I mean, I was totally on board with Edward Norton as the Hulk. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I mean, he did a great job, too. So, I'm totally, I mean, I like it. I know. I saw, it was on TV the other day. It was the, I was actually both Hawks. It was the original um, oh, one. Oh, that terrible one. Yeah. The Angley. Yeah. Angley was, yeah. And then it was the uh, Edward Norton one. Um, if you can, like, put those two movies together and splice them somehow <laughs> and make, like, your own Hulk movie, I think it would be a great, great part one to Mark Ruffalo's part two and, and the Avengers because... Um, it had a lot of really good elements, and I'm just really saddened that. Which one from the first movie had a good element? Um, I <sighs> exactly. Jules. No, it did. Exactly. It did. It did. It was like there was like action. I was watching, it and I was like, "Hey, that's not bad." I mean, I just wish it was. You know, he wasn't so bright green and stuff. I mean, there was some good elements, like you know, there was, there was some good action sequences. Uh, I don't like the design of the original Hulk at all. Yeah. Um, I think Edward Norton's Hulk was a step above that, and I think Mark ruffalo's design or his hulk was even a a step above that one um yeah so i think they really had a a chance to perfect mark ruffalo's hulk when you finally see him in the avengers um but yeah anyways i mean that that i think that's that's gonna be pretty cool uh fingers crossed that that happens well Uh, yeah it'd be cool it could be the first um Wouldn't be like the first Marvel team up movie. Yeah, and it's kind of like on 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 the heels of like when DC, how DC mentioned their team up with the Green Lantern and And Flash. Flash, Yeah, Yeah, so that would be smart on Marvel's part to do a team up as well. Because I mean, that's one of the complaints people had after the Avengers movies that when these people have their separate movies, like, well, how come none of the other people are in there? Just make like a a cameo or like, yeah, hey, you need any help? No. Well, right. right, Cool. Yeah, I think we talked about that in one of the podcasts uh, where it was like an Iron Man 3. Wouldn't like Thor or somebody show up at that point? And Captain like, America, at least with that one. Yeah. I feel like that was a terrorist thing. Yeah. You know, but. But I just think that all, all those, I mean, I think that the point that I made then and I'm going to make now is that those movies take place over a certain period of time, like three or four days. So by the time someone shows up, they're like, man, eh, he's got it under control. But no, that's true. I mean, if they all live in the same universe, they should probably be interacting a lot more, but. Yeah. Then, then yeah. again, like if it's all in the span of three to four days, <laughs> listen, like, okay, I just fought this major war in New York. Three days later, Tony Stark's at it again. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going on leave. All right. I'm going on vacation, call it a sick day, whatever. Well, there's a lot of things that the Thor could take care of, you know? I mean, he's, he's a demigod. So, you know, he had his own problems if we saw Thor too. Okay. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> so, um, that, that covers only the Marvel news, but I know there's a couple of DC news that, uh, hit the waves. Uh, Brandon. Did it? I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> we, have a, we, yes. have a, we have a list of DC things. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, the first one is Daniel Radcliffe, a.k.a. Harry Potter, have expressed extreme interest in playing Robin 
for the DC universe, and he's on board for any adaptation. Yeah, he was like of Robin, pretty much. Yeah, he was he was totally excited. I read the interview and I was like, man, this guy wants to be. Which Robin. is really weird to me because, like, nobody wants to play Robin. Like, do you yeah. think when you're a kid being an actor, it's like, oh, who do you want to play? Like, I really want to play Robin. Well, I think he's playing towards his strength. You know, he's not uber tall. He's a smaller, you know, actor. Um, you know, uh, he's a muscular guy, but he's not, you know, Ben Affleck status, let's just say. Why are you right now? Say. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that he's, I think that maybe he, you know, he would look at the roster and go, eh, it could be Robin. Um, who knows? Maybe he's a huge DC you know, a fan as well. I mean, he did express extreme interest and in, in wanted to be involved with it. But I wonder if actors at that point have like control. Like, I wonder if they just want to say it and and see if it like rides the wave, and, and then that way they get called in and be like, oh, you know, what we heard blah 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 blah. Um, sometimes, like you, I mean, um, they, I'm, I'm pretty sure like the executives hear about that stuff mm-hmm. and like, yeah. oh, what about Daniel Radcliffe? Like, oh, if we ever do Robin, we'll consider him. Like, well, maybe. Yeah. screen tested or you know audition at least yeah like when we were talking about batman and um i kept talking about when before ben affleck who's gonna be cast as batman and how i said oh scott atkins would be a really mm-hmm. great batman and a yeah. lot of people were like yeah scott atkins he actually got an audition just because of word of mouth like yeah all right let's try him out so i mean it, it's possible anything's possible in hollywood i still think i still think i mean not to go on a, on a side note here but i still think that justin thoreau would have made a perfect batman um he's the age he's the build he's the look too small but Christian Bale isn't that tall of a guy either. I'm sorry, but when you're going to have a Batman on the same kind of hype as Superman and Henry uh, Cavill, it's not a small guy. Well, no, but Superman is always known to be, he's supposed to be bigger. I think Batman's, the top of Batman's ears should reach his curl. <laughs> you know, I think that's the way it should. I don't, I don't know. know. I, think, I don't think they've think, ever been meant to be the same height. Not but, the same height, but at least kind of close where you're like, okay, well, Batman looks like he can kick his ass. Yeah. Ben Affleck looks like he can probably kick Superman's ass. Yeah. Like that's why. It's like Justin just looks. No, he looks. Uh, yeah. so sm- he looks oh, so especially small the directions that are going with it now. But I, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, if that. it was just like a standalone Batman, like how Christian Bale kind of had his, then yeah, I think he would be a perfect choice for uh, Batman. Yeah, but, but yeah. I mean, I I I I can't imagine any other actor uh, playing Robin. I, I haven't. I really thought about it. Yeah, I, I yeah. thought about it too. So and since Dan Reck was like, oh, I'll play Robins, like automatically I, I just went like, oh, all right, yeah. like, okay. Probably because we haven't given it much thought either because, like you said, who really wants who really, to play yeah, Robin? Yeah, before that, I was just like, oh, Joseph gordon Lovett, Joseph gordon Lovett, yeah. yeah, he'll be a perfect Robin. Yeah. I think I would, before I see a Robin in a movie, I'd love to see like a Nightwing or any other, you know. Well, that's how you get to Nightwing is through Robin. No, I know, but. Well, I know, but Ben Affleck's <laughs> Batman is super old. So oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you will have at that point. His whole Batman kind of team will be already be established. Right. Already. So at that point, who knows? I mean, Robin's probably already in his what mid 30s. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, Nightwing will be around that age. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah early 30s. I'm just going to I'm just imagining that he's probably already bought Bane. Probably. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I assume you know? he went through all that no, all stuff, stuff already. Because yeah. it's Frank, you know, it's, they're, they're, they're going off of Frank Miller's Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. exactly. So if he's supposed to be the older Batman, then I assume he already went yeah. through his shit already, you know? But yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I'm totally on board with it. Uh, um, but here's a little Robin tip bit for you guys. If you guys did not know in Batman forever, Chris Dow played Robin, as we all know. Mm-hmm. Right. But the original choice for Robin, and he actually screen tested, he auditioned, he got the part, he, he got the costume, he wore a suit, yeah, everything was Marlon Wayans. Get the hell out of here! Yeah, <laughs> Are you serious? True. But it actually, to dig it a little, Wayne's brother. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it would have been like Val Kimmer, Marlon Wayans, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tommy um, but- Lee Jones. <laughs> To dig a little deeper, though, actually, um, uh, Marlon Wayans was going to be in Batman Returns. Um, they actually started looking into him at that moment after the first Batman. Um, but when they were in talks with Tim Burton, he didn't want a direct sequel. He didn't want um, to make a sequel. He wanted to make uh, kind of like another standalone Batman movie. So in order to get Tim Burton back on board, they had to revive, uh, revise the um, script and... They got rid of a lot of other actors like uh, Billy D. Williams, Billy D. Williams um, and they got rid of uh, they got rid of Robin. Um, actually, they still got paid for it though. Well, right, yeah. yeah. And the only thing that really is remnant from the original movie, if you watch it, is just a mention of, of Vicky Vale. Um, but that was pretty much the only thing that made it through to the script. Other than that, that's meant to be a standalone movie um, directed by Tim Burton. 
Uh, but yeah, he was actually looked into. He was going to be in, in, in Batman Returns. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then it got slowly evolved. And then, you know, when Joel Schumacher got on board, um, you know, Marlon Wayans uh, was still on the table. And they ended up going with Chris O'Donnell. Yeah. Wait, wait so is, was it Batman Returns or Batman Forever? Well, Batman Forever is the first time you see Robin, but they started talking about Batman. I mean, they started talking about Robin in Batman Returns, and that's the first time that uh, Marlon Wayne's uh, name was dropped was in the sequel to Batman uh, in Batman Returns. So he was supposed to appear in Batman Returns. He was supposed to appear in Batman Returns, um, and they held off on it, uh, like I said, because Tim Burton really didn't want to do a direct sequel, and he kind of wanted to go a different direction. So finally, when he wasn't going to make another one, that's when they kind of you know went. Hey, let's do whatever we want. They got Joel Schumacher. They got all these, you know, they got all these characters. And they I have an idea. I have nipples an idea. on the bat I have, suit. I have and, an idea. Let's put neon lights <laughs> throughout Gotham. Throughout Gotham. And then all the windows. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's put a giant wing on the Batmobile so that way it's super loud and everyone notices it when it's driving yeah, down the street. It's going to be like the best. Screw Tim Burton right now. Yeah. Okay, we got our own Batman thing uh, going yeah. on. Let's make Bruce Wayne a playboy that also does. Batman at night. Yeah, of, <laughs> let's do that. Let's, let's, let's make the Batman like the subplot of Hold on, Bruce guys, Hold on. I just did a bump of cocaine right now. Okay. <laughs> St- stick with me on this one. Tommy Lee Jones has two fists. Whoa. What? That's crazy. Yeah. Well, oh, guys, George Clooney nah. and Batman oh. and Robin. No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Seriously, I know, I know. Stick with me with this one, okay? All right, I'm following. Be, okay. be my shadow on this one. I'll be your shadow. Arnold Schwarzenegger, wait for it, wait for it, Mr. Freeze. Oh, Boom! Wow. No way! I'm on board. Right? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm Best totally there. Batman movie ever, ever. dude. We're going to make a fortune <laughs> off of this. <laughs> well, um, on some more DC news, uh, Gotham's uh, pilot director, Danny Cannon, has revealed that he wants Mr. Freeze to appear in the Batman prequel series. Um, they also revealed that the Joker will make an appearance, but it will be handled with great Care. You have to handle have him. To, yeah. It looks great. Super great care. Like, you have to find... I want them to do an unknown actor as Joker. Yeah, no, they, they they should. They should do all unknown actors. All unknown all, actors. For that, for that TV series. I want somebody who will pretty much play the part. I mean, like, I know it's going to be... So, it's not gonna, he's not going to be Joker, mm-hmm. but we know he's going to be the guy that's going to be... Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not even... I'm, I don't... Uh, I honestly, I hope they don't give him a backstory. I really love the fact that when jo- when when Joker is just you know an unknown, yeah. Um, but but I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, they're introducing a lot of villains already. I mean, they're mentioning a lot of villains um, in this Gotham TV series. Now, I know it's a TV series and it's not meant to you know cooperate with the DC uh, cinematic universe, but. I, I'm so used to TV series starting very slowly and like building up and maybe having like a villain a season or you know having a well big... that's what they that's what they're doing every all the I think all the cameos I think Jada Pickett Smith uh, character mm-hmm. what's a fishy yeah yeah, fishy yeah she's the main gangster villain in it mm-hmm. but I think the penguin and everybody else are just going to be little cameos that mm-hmm. you'll see throughout the season kind of like moving on and yeah. then as you as I seriously pray to God that Fox will keep you know, the show going, mm-hmm. you'll start seeing them kind of go into their, the villains that we all know. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'll start seeing little characteristics kind of pop out. And I guess, I mean, I kind of, I really wished that, that it would be a little bit more of a surprise. I mean, cause I re- I'm going to watch the show and I really want to enjoy it. And I mean, the fact that I already mm-hmm. know that they're already talking about Mr. Freeze and, and Hey, Hey, stop reading articles about it then. All right. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I, <laughs> the thing is that I just think about it from an average viewer who don't, Look at stuff like we do. Like they're not yeah. gonna know about like. But it's not even Freeze. that. I mean, yeah, I, th- think about it from my point of view. Yeah, like you think he's gonna, you think he's gonna know it's like when they actually do reveal. Yeah, but like, you don't know anything about DC. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. that's the whole point. Is more. That's for, why I'm here. <laughs> it's more for you know audience like him than yeah. for us really because you can kind of get these new people into start watching this type yeah. of stuff. I mean, exactly. So when they actually make a reveal like. Holy crap! That guy in the background is gonna be the Joker. That's awesome. Yeah. Like you know, I just yeah. I, I mean, that's just, I mean, I guess, I mean, but you had an argument about uh, Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice about having so many characters in one movie. Well, that's just the movie. It's a two-hour movie. This is a season. I mean, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you can kind of spread that. You can, if you can, okay, you can load it up with as many villains as you want. But if you spread it out and do it right, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's totally possible. All right, valid. That's Take valid. Your time. With Look this. at like Smallville. They had like a, a villain of a. Each episode was a mm-hmm. villain with a different uh, power. It's like towards the beginning with their own like meteor freaks, yeah. and then 
as the seasons progress, then you realize like, oh, hey, this is, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so, but it's mostly Lex Luthor, who you knew was going to be the villain. Well, I have a question for us. If... Riddle me this, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> if there would be a Batman reboot, okay, because I know that that's something that uh, kind of was, was talked about was possibly, what, 2019? 19? Yeah. If there would be a Batman reboot, which villains would you like to see in that film, and uh, who would you see play the villain? How about let's just choose one or two? Okay. Uh, I thought about it a little bit. Um, I have the Riddler. Okay. Okay. I think it would be a good movie because he can kind of mess with him psychologically. So you would want to see the Riddler again? I would like to see the Riddler again. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Jim Carrey, mm-hmm. but that's just my own personal bias of yeah. just loving Jim Carrey. But he wasn't the Riddler, the Riddler. He mm-hmm. was just, you know, yeah, not like the Riddler is in the comic books and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to do the Riddler. I have two actors in mind. Okay. Michael C. Hall. Who played Dexter? Or huge long shot because he's already playing Magneto, but uh, Michael Fassbender. Yeah, yeah, the Riddler. That's that's kind I of get, a big name for the Riddler. Yeah, yeah, it's a big name, but I mean, I think he'll give it justice. Yeah. He can do no wrong. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Anybody? Uh, anybody else? Viggo Mortensen. Viggo. I I like Viggo Mortensen, and I would like to see him play Mister Freeze. I oh, know. I can totally see that. You know, like, I don't know, give him an accent. I don't know. Like, I just, or not. I just, I, I, I think that he can really play a strong, deep villain. Just letting you guys, everybody out there know, who saw Batman and Robin think Mr. Freeze is like this huge guy. Yeah. Not really. There's like a lot of different incarnations of Mr. Freeze. So, well, not only that, Mr. Freeze has a really rich backstory. I yeah. love, oh, you know, yeah. it, it's like a, you know, he has a really good love story and he's a very deep character. Um, I wouldn't even really call him uh, a villain, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not really doing it for. He's like a tortured villain. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's like he, I would see him as like the Doc Doc Ock from Spider Man Two, like how yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a good. He one. wasn't really a villain. He was just trying to doing this stuff to you know get his experiment right and do the stuff, but just Spider Man just kept getting in his way. So, yeah, you know, right. Yeah, like it was just one of those like. Mr. Freeze is doing all this stuff just so he can save his wife, but at the same time, it is bad stuff, and Batman got to do his job. So, right. yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a great... I feel kind of bad because I realize that we haven't heard from Mike at all. I know. <laughs> nah, that's cool. You know, you just, uh, you know, hey, what, what villain would you like to see, Mike? You know? <laughs> oh, we kind of went up on a tangent there. No, no, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Like, it's all gravy. You know? <laughs> I just enjoy sitting back here. You should see I'm the- sorry. We're sorry. Okay, you have our the- undivided attention right uh, now. Yeah. Go, go. We're go. We're going. No, fuck you guys. I'm just You guys want to do this? You guys want to do this? You want to do this? All right, let's do this. Let's do this. I'll just pick the penguin and have Ryan Gosling do it. (laughs) Great. Hey, great choice, Mike. Thank you. Really good. good. Seriously. I would never suspect Ryan Gosling. I would never (laughs) thought that. No, not at all. That's right. I contributed. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on. Moving on. Okay. All right. Ready for this? Because I know I am. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, last week, uh, OK Go, the band, released a new music video called the Writing is on the Wall. And I must say, it's very fun to watch. Yes. The theme revolves around optical illusions, and every few seconds, a new illusion pops up. It's carefully mapped out, and like the majority of their videos, it was done in one shot. So I can just imagine them like being on like, take 27 and they're about to get that final <laughs> shot are you kidding me man yeah. are you kidding me but like seriously though it's a it's a great song it's very catchy i went ahead and already downloaded the song i paid for it i paid for oh, it. it was wow. a book, it was a book. Wow. How, yeah, that was sound, it was first. worth it it was worth it <laughs> it was that worth it you know it, it was worth it that much so the song is available for download off itunes and all as well as their current ep upside out however you can get the song for free if you pre-order their upcoming album hungry ghost which is scheduled to release on October 14th. Uh, you text me, I remember, uh, over the last week, you text me, okay, go, the video, you got to watch it. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to watch it. And I was like, wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's uh, really good. It's yeah. very creative. It's good, but I still like, here we go again. Yeah, that's oh, the yeah. original. That's, that's the original. The original. I, it's the original. But I, just, I, just, that was, I mean, don't get me wrong, that's super creative what they did there. Mm-hmm. Like, that was just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah. And then as well, like, let me get this in before you guys uh, come. <laughs> uh, during the week, I'm, I'm glad we, we had a week to like reflect on this. But seriously, the news took off about the ultimate dude activity. There's a, there's this new sport that combined the great aspects of MMA with the thrilling intensity of skydiving, thus resulting in an eruption of awesomeness. Ooh. 
I'm talking about full contact skydiving. <laughs> I was so on board for it. Uriah Faber, UFC fighter, bantamweight. Uh, he was like the spokesperson for this whole new sport. It looked awesome. It was a nice little like documentary revolving around it. Find out. It's all fake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How, what it was, it was an uh, ad campaign for Amp Energy Drink. And like, their, their slogan is, no bull, just energy. <laughs> so is that a shot at Red Bull Energy Drink? I don't know. Yeah. We're not sponsored by either, so we don't care. <laughs> Seriously, uh, Red Bull, if you want to get on that and sponsor us, that'd be uh, great. I heard. I mean, yeah, I, I heard about it, and I was like, that's pretty wild. I mean, the way that things are nowadays, I was not surprised at all. I was like, I guess, you know, they're probably going to have a referee that's flying along with them. They there could, was. We'll, we'll put, there <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, but... Wow, uh, now I've seen everything jump out of the airplane now. I've seen uh, BMX, a little snowboard, a little board. Um, sex. Actually, they have people <laughs> having sex skydiving. I've seen a video about that. I've seen several videos of that. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, We're not going to link that in the show. No, 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 no. You got to go on your own and you go, <laughs> go find that one. <laughs> that, that's the X-rated. <laughs> that's for two dudes, <laughs> two nerds and a dude after dark. <laughs> uh, but all right, well, I guess uh, that's our first segment of news. By the way, guys, we have a lot of news to talk about, and so we're just going to fill this episode with just tons of really good news and uh, update you guys on everything that perhaps you've missed um, know or you just guys. flesh out uh, anything that uh, is out there. We know you guys have been waiting for us. And, to, you know, we it. have an opinion. So, anyways, uh, stick around, and we'll be right back. Take it back to our old school heritage days and bring back an old <laughs> segment called Movie Factoids. Yes. The more you know. Well, anyways, as most of you guys, some of you guys, none of you guys know, <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes stay late up at night and I look up IMDb Movie Factoids and I compile them in a top five list that I like to call Movie Factoids. The more you know. Starting with my top five movie factoid, um, in the movie uh, ID4, or Independence Day, Matthew Perry was originally offered the role of Captain Jimmy Raven, Wilder, but pulled out at the last minute. Uh, his father, John Bennett Perry, plays a Secret Service man in the movie. Or, as a good reverend would say, why we on this particular mission, we'll never know. But what we do know is that the Black Knights will emerge victorious once again. Amen, Reverend. Amen. <laughs> Thanks Amen, for- brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank- thanks for humoring me, guys, on that one. Uh, anyways, uh, number four. In Jurassic Park, there's only 15 minutes of actual dinosaur footage in the film. Nine minutes of it is Stan Winston's animatronics, and only six minutes of it is ILM CGI. So that's crazy that only six minutes of CGI footage of dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. Um, uh, also, Harrison Ford turned down the role of Dr. Alan Grant, and Jim Carrey was considered for the role of Ian Malcolm. So why did he turn it down? Was he too busy to play in Jurassic Park? Yeah, I think because he's Harrison Ford. So he was like, I'm still making real movies. I don't know. It's Steven Spielberg, though. So exactly. I, that's oh, cool. I'm banging oh, close to Flockhart. <laughs> oh, I love my I'm life. Gonna, uh, I'm going to do six days, seven nights instead of this shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pierce my other ear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> pierce my other ear. Um and number three, in Batman Returns, the character of Max Shrek, famously played by Christopher Walken, was a rewrite of District Attorney Harvey Dent. Accordingly, most of his plot points would have made more sense if Shrek was a DA agent, um, or I'm sorry, District Attorney, uh, instead of a corrupt businessman. But the explosion at the end of the film with Catwoman was meant to injure Dent and produce the scars that would lead him to be uh, Two-Face. Um, reportedly, uh, Billy D. Williams took the role of Harvey Dent in the first Batman because he thought... Eventually, it, he would become Two-Face, but uh, rumor has it that his contract was bought out by Warner Brothers at a 
hefty price. Whoa. That's got a Lando was going to be Two Face. Well, yeah, because they set that up in part one. Um, and he actually was, you know, that's why he played the role was because he's like, well, part two, they're probably going to, you know, I'm going to be the bad guy. And Warner Bros. is like, nope. We'll pay you not to come back. That's got, that's got to suck. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, hey, listen, we don't want you so much. We will give you money. to. Yeah. Well, well I, it happens all the time in Hollywood. You'll be really, you'll be surprised how many people got like their contract bought out just so. I think, yeah. You know, they can get somebody else. A lot of it, I still think that it had to do with uh, Tim Burton and him not wanting to make a sequel to Batman and him doing like a standalone and him trying to have as much creative control as possible. So yeah. that might have had something to do with it. But uh, but yeah, I mean that would have been pretty cool seeing Billy Dee Williams as Harvey Dent, um, Black Two Face. I mean, oh, it wouldn't yeah. have been yeah, it wouldn't have been the best I think role for Two Face. But I mean, it would have been a different adaptation. Hey, it would have been ahead of this time, you know? Why not? It's breaking color barriers in comic book movies, which is a huge problem. That's really, what, that's what Tim Burton does. Tim Burton is a sellout. <laughs> oh, I said it. And no, stick all right, with no. It. let's stay on task. Let's stay on task. <laughs> And on to number two, uh, in the first Mission Impossible, Emilio Estevez appears in an uncredited role in this film. Tom Cruise had previously made a similar uncredited cameo in Estevez's earlier film, Young Guns. His scene is a shootout at the McSween house, and his face is clearly appears on screen in slow motion as he is killed. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tom Cruise was in Young Guns. No, go back to that one. Coach Bombay <laughs> was in Mission Impossible. <laughs> yes, he was. Whoa. Quack, 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 quack. quack. <laughs> Actually, uh, and even uh, the reason why they hired uh, Emilio Estevez is because they wanted kind of like a bigger name star to die at the beginning of that movie. Spoiler alert. Because they wanted it to have bigger impact. Hold on, people. I'm going to go back to something I said previous when we first did this. I knew that. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you did. Um, and finally, in the movie Zombieland, Patrick Swayze was offered a cameo role as a zombie before his cancer diagnosis. Uh, his scene would have been a parodied other Swayze movies like Ghost and Dirty Dancing. Other zombie cameos were offered to Joe Pesci, Mark Hamill, uh, Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Bacon, John claude Van Damme, and Matthew McConaughey. Uh, John Carpenter was also turned down the role to direct the film. So... No. <laughs> I thought that would have, I mean, I, I, I always, I mean, I love Bill Murray. Uh, his cameo, I think it makes a, a bigger impact if it's just one actor, I guess. But I did, I thought it would be awesome to see other, uh, you know, celebrities as zombies when they went to LA and did that whole thing in that movie. So that would have been cool. How much brains would The Rock have to eat to maintain <laughs> that physique? Yeah, <laughs> I know, that's true. So that is my top five factoid, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. Um, uh, on to some more movie news, Mike. Do you have anything for us? Yes, I do. Shane Black, also known as Hawkins from the original Predator and director of Iron Man 3, has apparently been chosen to direct the reboot to Predator with script being co-written by himself and Monster Squad director Fred Decker, who also wrote Lethal Weapon. I'm ready for another Predator movie. Um, I can honestly say that I've enjoyed all of them. Uh, not the not the Alien versus Predator ones. Um, those have been fine, but I mean, I've as far as like Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator Two with Danny Glover and Predator Three with Adrian Brody. Brody. Um, I, I those are those have been really good. In fact, I I would even I know I'm gonna I might get a lot of flack from my friend West this, but I even put Predator over Predator 3 over Predator 2. I, I've enjoyed that uh, a lot better. I will 2. go the same route. I I did enjoy Predator, or the new Predators, yeah, as they say. That's true, yeah. Over Predator 2. Mm-hmm. Um, don't know why. I know I shouldn't because Gary Busey's in Predator 2, and Gary Busey is mostly awesome in anything. Yeah. So Plus, I mean, just the, the I think that the way that they fleshed out the Predator character in, in Part 2, uh, you know, and, and giving him more of a backstory. Yeah. And it, was, it, it really made him more of a warrior instead of just some alien that comes down yeah, to Earth and, and like, wreaks havoc. I just like the whole Predator's story about how these hardened criminals kind of came, got warped, we don't know, into yeah. this world. Planet. Planet. And it's pretty much just like a, a war zone mm-hmm. between the rival uh, predators. Yeah. And didn't uh, Robert Rodriguez write this? Uh, I think he like produced it. Or, he produced yeah. It. He, but I heard something like he was he was trying to develop this because he wanted this to be the sequel and actually feature Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, but yeah. you know, uh, yeah, yeah the stuff just kind of fell apart, and then kind of got Adrian Brody, which a lot of people were just like, no, he's too, you know, he's too small. Even though he did bulk up, and it's just like, hey, if you look at 
Marines and people right. in the military now, they look like Adrian Brody's physique and not right. like Arnold. Nobody has Arnold Schwarzenegger's <laughs> physique back in the 80s. So, yeah. I mean, I still enjoyed it. I mean, I thought it was, I can, even when it comes on TV, I still end up still watching it just because so I, I enjoyed it. So you're down for the reboot? Oh, I'm totally down. Shane Black can do no wrong except for Iron Man 3, but that wasn't, most, that wasn't his fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, totally. I mean, he was in the original. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like he... Yeah, he can do it justice. What are uh, what are your favorite lines from uh, Predator? If it bleeds, we can kill it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. Strap this on your sore ass. That's a, good, <laughs> that's a good one too. Yeah, that's so many great quotes from that movie. Oh man, <laughs> like yeah, they don't make them like that anymore. No, they really, they don't, they no. really do well, not. Even the way that the movie ended, yeah, you know, oh, just the way God. that they like they flash to every actor that was in it, and, it, and they give them like a moment. Yeah, like everybody yeah. just had like their little smile and just like. Thumbs yeah. up. I always, <laughs> dude, they should have. I thought they were going to do something like that for Predators. I really wanted them to do, just bring it back to the original and do that. But that they, was uh, probably the best part. There's times where I, I, I can't even find that. I go on YouTube. I'm like, I just want to look at Predator yeah. in credits, but nothing. They always just show you like yeah. the, the song or whatever. I was like, I just want that little, like, yeah. I think all movies should just end like that. Just, <laughs> it's just a, everybody with a thumb pat. <laughs> with Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> with Arnold Schwarzenegger giving the thumbs up at the end of it. Boom. Everybody just have their own little montage and do like the AOK sign. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That's, I'm in favor of that. We should write the Hollywood. That is have, they should have done that at the end of Titanic. It's just, <laughs> oh. just do it for all of them. Like just <laughs> <laughs> Schindler's List, <Yeah>. Titanic. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah. All of them. I'm like, oh, you know what? This movie wasn't so sad. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, Brandon, do you have anything uh, coming upstream? Yes. Rambo 5 has been green-lighted, everybody. Yay. Sylvester Stallone does not quit. <laughs> <laughs> he will write and star in this movie. The plot will be around Rambo going against the Mexican Cartel. Rambo's dead. Yeah, I know, I right? know. Good Rambo's dead. You, you don't mess around with the Mexican cartel. <laughs> they yeah. are going to make you soup. All right. <laughs> well, let's just see how he holds up with these guys. Um, I'm down to see another Rambo flick. Again, my biggest qualm with uh, Rambo, or I'm sorry, Sylvester Stallone, is that he's not the best looking guy anymore. So no. uh, it'll be hard to do those zoom, those, those close ups. But, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, it'd just be like him across the river and you just see him just like. <laughs> <laughs> However, I didn't see the last Rambo because I, yeah, I, I heard it was extremely violent. And it I mean, was so violent. I don't mind violent films. I don't. But like when someone like you know preps me and says, "Oh, dude, it's completely violent," I go, "Man, I don't need." It to was see some it. stuff was like really unnecessary. <laughs> like you can tell they were just trying to amp it up and just like. Did he really need to just have like an exploding tip at the end of that arrow, and then the dude like just blows up, yeah. and they don't even cut away from it? It's just like yeah, it's like one shot. Yeah, it's just like one <laughs> shot. Like, he gets hit with the arrow, and he's like, "What?" And then push. <laughs> they drew for his blood. Um, Mike, do you have anything for us? Yes, I actually have some movie news. Yay. Wow. Yeah, some, okay, listen up. Uh, growing up in the hood, <laughs> you listen. You're a product of your environment. All right. So when I heard about this, I was deeply, deeply happy. NWA is going to release a biopic called, appropriately, Straight Outta Compton. What? What? what yes. What? The film will be directed by F. Gary Gary. No, that is not a typo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who also directed The Italian Job in Friday. And uh, we'll introduce several stars, such as Corey Hawkins as Dr. Dre, Jason Mitchell as Easy E, and O'Shea Jackson as Ice Cube. Interesting note, yeah. O'Shea Jackson is Ice Cube's <laughs> real son. Hold right. on, you guys. Seriously? Seriously? That was Mike. First tidbit. <laughs> that was a tidbit. That was a that tidbit. Was, wow. That was a tidbit. And I got another tidbit coming for you guys. You ready for this one? You ready for this one? All right, here we go. Dr. Dre originally wanted Michael B. Jordan to play Dr. Dre in the movie. However, since Mr. Jordan is currently casted as the Human Torch in Fantastic Four, scheduling conflicted or right. conflicted. So, <laughs> con- damn it, I was so close <laughs> to that tidbit. I. No, you, it hey, you made it, man. You made it. You it's got good. it. You it's got good. it. Uh, you got yes. it. Let me, let me add a little tidbit to your tidbit, Mike. Um, Bring it on. Uh, Ice Cube also only wanted his son to play him. So uh, he didn't want any other actor to do it. He said, you know what? If we're going to make this movie, we're going to go forward with it. My son is 
going to be in the movie and he's going to play me. See, now that's what I like. Ice Cube saying he wants his son to play him. Mm-hmm. As far as Dr. Dre went, like a very good looking <laughs> yeah, dude to yeah. play him. I'd be like, yeah. oh, yeah, okay, in my bio life, I want like Ryan Gosling to play me. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it just. Uh, it Wouldn't just, you? <laughs> he's, he's already paying, playing the penguin. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I, I just hope this biopic goes a little further and just like goes on to their like uh, lives after NWA, like Ice Cube making family movies <laughs> and uh, yeah, Dr. Dre true. selling beats. <laughs> oh, that movie should end with all of them doing like the, the thing with the end of Predator, like know, turning right? around, like you know, Ice Cube is now in a TV show and <laughs> Dr. Dre selling beats and Ice Cube in yeah. a hospital gown. <laughs> <laughs> and they just show. I don't, I don't know how they're gonna do it with EVE. Like, well, the show, the show is great. Yeah, the show is great. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's messed up. All right, now. Julius, oh yeah, do you have some movie news for <laughs> us? I do have some movie news, Brandon. Ryan Johnson, famous for directing Looper, has been chosen to direct Star Wars Episode Eight <laughs> and possibly Nine. Sources say that at this point, he's only been asked to be involved in the writing for Episode Nine. Um, huge news! Um, I'm I'm excited because. You know, with the original uh, trilogy, they had three different directors that come in. You know, George Lucas, Irvin Kirshner, um, the other guy. <laughs> we don't mention that guy. We don't mention that guy. You end the movie with Ewoks, you don't get to be known in this podcast. No, I'm terrible. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm just blanking on that uh, director. But um, I'm glad that they're doing it again. You know, uh, I think there are sources out there that are saying that he's also going to direct episode nine. But um, nothing's really been confirmed as far as that, uh, but yeah, he's gonna be he's he's gonna be directing episode eight after J.J. Uh, Abrams, and you know, all power to him. He's, in my opinion, he's kind of a younger, uh, less experienced director, but um, I'm sure he's up for the challenge of directing this monstrosity that is the Star Wars universe. Um, Brandon, I know, is super excited about it. So, Brandon, tell us what you think. Yes, super super excited. I have been following this guy's career since I saw Brick. Um, love Bro- uh, Brothers Bloom, liked Looper. Uh, I'm totally on board with it. I like that they kind of went with a um, lesser known director, but who's very creative. Um, and then me and Jules kind of <laughs> debated and got into it because yes. I said that he can direct a better Star Wars movie than JJ. Yeah, he's like he he he's more excited to see JJ or his his movie than JJ Abrams' movie, and it just it sparked this thing inside of me. This <laughs> pri- primal, you know, evil. This is the jewels you do not want to see in public. <laughs> Here, no, no. Here's the thing. I mean, I I could I, I understand that point of view, and that you know, right rightly so. I mean, that possibly could be the you know the situation, but. Um, he said that to me in text. We didn't have an episode last week, and like 30 minutes later, and 300 texts later, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> gifts being sent back and forth. And I, 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 I kid you not, guys. I'm sit, I'm at the dog park with my wife, <laughs> and these two are going back and forth, bantering back and forth, and I'm just laughing while my yeah. wife's like, "Why aren't you hanging out with me at the park?" <laughs> So, I mean, we kind of, we ended on the conclusion that, you know, we're both excited for it. And, you know, like they said, with different directors directing a Star Wars movie. Not not only that, I mean, to to go off to what, you know, Brandon was saying about him directing the better movie. um, I think that that's what's expected. I think everybody uh, has wanted an Empire Strikes Back ever since Empire Strikes Back. I mean, it's been, I mean, that movie is a perfect film. And. And um, it has everything that you want. I mean, we just talked about it in our last podcast. It was a number one movie of all time as far as fan favorites. Um, so I think uh, I think that's what everyone's hoping for. Um, I think it's. I mean, I he's he's gonna have. He, that's all I'm saying is that he's gonna have have big shoes to fill. Not just because of JJ, but because of Irving Kirshner, but because of Empire Strikes Back. I mean, there's there's a lot riding on this sequel to this movie. So um, I hope pressure doesn't really like knock him out. I don't think so. I mean, uh, going back to what you said, like the second movie of a, the trilogy, I mean, that's what everybody kind of had their hopes like with the Attack of the Clones. Like, yeah. okay, Phantom Menace was like, eh, but Attack of the Clones might be the uh, the worst one. Yeah. Um, I think the only way he can do a very great movie if J.J. builds a, a base, a great base for him to mm-hmm. kind of launch off of for it. Right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it all really depends. I mean, I know they're going to be collaborating and talking and like, okay, what do you want to go from this and to this? And, you know, yeah. so. I'm not I, really, that, and I don't really know how much of a Star Wars fan he is. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. It doesn't, I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter. But, I mean, I'm just saying as, as long as you know the universe, I mean, that's. that's I don't think even that. I feel like if, in fact, if you don't, 
I feel like you could probably do a better movie if you're not familiar with Star Wars because you're kind of coming in with like really open eyes kind of thing, mm-hmm. not as a fan. Like, oh, I want to all my life. I wanted to see this. I'm going to put this in the movie. Like you're just coming in and you're just doing a bet, the, you know, the best movie that you can possibly do. Yeah. But, I, but I can also see oh, like when you come in with fresh eyes, like, well, let's add that. And then millions of nerds just be like, what the hell did you do? Why yeah. would you put that? Are you so stupid? I'm never going to listen to two nerds in the dude again. <laughs> yeah. No, who true. knows? I mean, like you said, who knows? Who knows? I mean, this is kind of like everybody's kind of hopes for Star Wars. But it's Wars great. Movie. It's big news. It's huge it's news. It's huge news. I and like the direction that they are going with these movies. So, yeah. uh, And I everyone mean, seems to be pretty excited about yeah, it. Yeah, except for, you know, Harrison Ford injuring his ankle. But well, yeah, yeah. whatever. He's yeah. good. He's a trooper. He'll be back. I mean, they're, they're filming around him. Um, and they're doing, like, close-ups right now from what I'm reading and things that they can do that don't, you know, involve him walking. But it is going to be uh, quite a re- rehabilitation process for him. It is, and then that's the rumor was uh, it might it could be uh, delayed because of the because of his injury. Oh, so instead of 2015, Maybe. it might be 2016. Wait. So we still might begin our Star Wars and <laughs> Batman versus Superman movie in the same year. <laughs> so on a, on a, on a, uh, a side note, um, you also mentioned something that probably isn't true, but oh yes, okay. So the big rumor is. My man, <laughs> my action star, my power animal, <laughs> Tom Cruise could have a cameo in Star Wars. And before you guys are like, uh, no, no, no. Come on, guys. It's Tom Cruise. <laughs> he can cameo in anything and it will still be amazing. OK, so, um, yeah, he's been he's been in London and him and JJ. I mean, they're great friends ever since Mission Impossible 3. So, I mean. I, they were just having lunch and dinners and stuff, and also a producer from Star Wars has been having lunches and dinners. So yeah, who who, who knows? He can just, who knows? He it's can, not gonna it's not gonna ruin the movie for me if Tom Cruise is in it. I'll, I mean, it's not. If I see it's Ab- not gonna be if a, I see Admiral Cruise, Admiral Cruise, I wouldn't be. Uh, that'd be cool, you know. Admiral Cruise. They're not gonna use his real <laughs> name, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy. No. It'd be awesome. All right. Uh, anyway. Tom Cruise would be the only person. That can play himself <laughs> in an <laughs> outer space in, movie. In Star, Wars movie. <laughs> Star Wars movie. Uh well anyways guys, I think uh, I feel a lot better about talking about all this news. I don't know about you guys, but we really held it in for about two weeks. My soul is cleansed now. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna soothe our ears with another music break, um, and we'll be back and uh, how about we talk about some trailers? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do this. Let, let, let's do this. Let's uh, do it. Alright, see you guys soon. I shall not try to conceal the gravity of the situation that confronts the country. Fortunately, this formidable enemy is still confined to a comparatively small area, and we may place our faith in the military forces to keep them there. However, I wish to impress upon you, all of you, we may confront this destructive adversary and consecrate it to the preservation of supremacy on this earth. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so now we're going to talk about some of our favorite trailers that we uh, recently watched. Um, so, Jules, I want to kick it to you. Which, uh, which trailer you're excited about? Uh, I'm actually excited for Let's Be Cops. Um, it stars Jack Johnson, uh, or I'm sorry, it stars Jake Johnson or Nick Miller from New Girl um, and uh, Damon Waynes Jr. Um, it's also directed by um, Luke Greenfield. Uh, who also directed The Girl Next Door. Um, it was kind of like a, a weird trailer that I just came across, and I was like, well, what is this? Nick Miller? What's going on? Because I, I like uh, uh, Jake Johnson. Um, pretty much the premise is uh, two guys dress up for Halloween as cops, and they really take it to the extreme. And uh, so it, it looks like a really funny movie. I saw the Red Band trailer on YouTube. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Damon Wayans Jr. Um, ever since the other guys. I just think that he he, he brings a, a, a certain comedy to a movie or to a role that is very unique, um, and uh, Nick Miller, he's my he's my guy. I like him. I think he's a man's man. Um, I think he's funny, um, and I enjoy my new girl. So you know, can't go wrong with uh, Let's Be Cops. Uh, yeah, uh, looks, well, looks hilarious. I hope this is kind of like a breakout movie for both of them, really, especially for Damon Wayans Jr. I feel like he just has that star comedy quality to himself yeah. where he can actually be a uh, a movie star more yeah. than a TV star. He was hilarious in Happy Endings. Yeah, exactly. I was really upset when they didn't bring that show back. Thank you! That was such a great show. <laughs> yeah. 
I didn't know you watched it. I, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I was really <laughs> happy when they canceled it, and he came back to New Girl because that's where he belonged. No. <laughs> if you watch Happy Endings, happy. you can tell he belongs. Yeah. That, was the, that, that was the show right I'll there. be honest. I didn't watch Happy Endings, See? so I, yeah, would, I it, wouldn't know. Yeah, it was <laughs> a great yeah. show. <laughs> But yeah, I hope I seriously hope this is like for both of them because they're both really talented guys and they're both really likable. I mean, like I said, it's from New Girl with uh, Nick Miller. Nick Miller, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. look out for that one. Uh, it opens on August thirteenth. Uh, Mike, do you have anything for us? Yes, I do. Uh, the interview, Ooh. which stars James Franco and Seth Rogen. Uh, basically, the premise is uh, Franco and Rogan play journalist, and they find out that Kim Jong Un is a fan of their show. So the U.S. government sets uh, sends them over to North Korea, not to interview them, but to assassinate them. Oh. And it looks uh, pretty funny. Uh, it, it was it was di- directed by it's directed by Seth Rogan and Evan Goldberg, who's also directed and wrote This Is the End. Uh, so, funny. Interesting story about this. No tidbit. <laughs> no tidbit. Wow, well, you're full of tidbits today, little Mike. Tidbits. Uh, apparently, the spokesperson for uh, North Korea <laughs> had some uh, harsh words uh, in regards to this movie. They have declared war on James Franco and Seth Rog- Rogen due to this movie. Uh, according to the spokesperson, the enemies have gone beyond the tolerance limit in their despicable moves to dare hurt the dignity of the supreme leadership. Listen, when you're in North Korea, you don't mock Kim Jong Un. You don't mock the fearless leader he is the greatest leader i wish our podcast was sponsored by north korea but it's not because we get we get to eat food so yeah that's my wouldn't it be wouldn't it be oh my god like wouldn't it be crazy if we did go to war with north korea because of this movie (laughs) because of james franco and 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 actually (laughs) that would be and 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 that would lead into this is the end part two yeah (laughs) Yeah, exactly exactly so it all worked out yeah yeah Yeah. the movie is released october 14 2014 go watch it looks funny if you guys like pineapple express you probably like this movie yes brandon what do you got yes i have the (laughs) expendable three yes ladies and gentlemen there's a third expendable i'm gonna give that an applause yes yes this time around it's directed by patrick hughes and new to the roster, because they still kept the original guys of Stallone and Statham and Jet Li and Terry Crews and Randy Couture. And all those guys. And all those other guys. <laughs> and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, Harrison Ford. What? what? And Antonio Banderas. What? <laughs> Kelsey Grammer. All right. All right. Yeah. I'll, I'll stick with that. And my girl, my crush, my hashtag WCW. <laughs> Rhonda Rowdy Rousey. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's why I'm going to watch this movie. I got to support my girl. I got to support my girl. Now, uh, little tidbit. Uh, <laughs> I got a tidbit for this one, too. You guys didn't know that, huh? Yeah, full of tidbits. We should just start calling this podcast <laughs> Tidbits. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you're going to get. It's just tidbits. <laughs> Hashtag tidbits. <laughs> tidbits. <laughs> that may actually happen. <laughs> exactly. This is, my, yeah, this is actually a good idea. It might happen. It's a little tidbit for you guys. Uh-huh. Now, Harrison Ford is in the movie because Bruce Willis, greedy ass, was asking for too much money. Whoa. And the loan said, the hell with you. I'm going to go get Harrison Ford. Because he's a better, he's like a bigger <laughs> actor, right? Yeah. Is that that? And then he was like, for what? less of the pay, Harrison, less of Ford, the pay? Harrison Ford was in between movies and was like, okay, I'll come. Yeah, sure. Dang. Uh, so uh, that's one. That's so, pretty much, yeah. That's crazy. So Harrison, Ford, uh, Harrison Ford's ankle was good enough for this movie, but not enough for Star Wars. No. Uh, it's, this I know, this right? one's already in the, <laughs> this one's already done with. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce Willis, for being so greedy and selfish. Okay? I, it's going to be fun to see Harrison Ford in a role like this. I think it's been a while since he's done something, uh, I'm going to say fun. You know, like he's, if he's not doing serious movies or he's, he's you know, I just. Or I, being Harrison Ford. Or being Harrison Ford, you know. I, I, I Plus the trailer, guys. The trailer for this okay. is crazy. I, it is. Like at first I was totally against this movie. I really didn't care for it. Like I'll still watch it, but it wouldn't be like one of those like I have to go to the theater and watch it. Like, oh, Come on, HBO, watch it. Just watched the trailer, and 
Yeah, it is pretty legit. Also, um, left off the roster. I'm terribly sorry because I'm black. I should know. <laughs> Wesley Snipes is actually oh, in the movie. Yes, Wesley. He is out Snipes. of jail, people. This happened. This actually <laughs> this happened. actually happened. He's in the movie. Yes, and you know what? I'm really super excited for this. I am because of Wesley Snipes. Blade, everybody. I know. Blade. Yeah. White yeah. man can't jump. I think they got a really good roster. You know, this I, time around, I really, they really do have a good roster, and Mel Gibson is the villain. Which um, I mean, I mean, come on. <laughs> Wait, I know you're saying, Ugh, but like, I saw, <laughs> if you saw the second Machete movie, and he was the villain in that one. Yeah. He was pretty out there, and no, it was still there, good. There's I, no doubt that Mel Gibson can bring it, and you know, he, he he can do a lot of different roles. I think it's just his sketchy past slash it's, present okay, slash yeah, it's true. But By you know, sketchy, you mean racist, <laughs> racist, <laughs> anti-Semitic, <laughs> yeah, or semi. Yeah. yeah. So um, I mean, yeah, yeah. But, but hey, on, on, but but it's good. I mean, yeah, it's, it's good. It's gonna be a good movie. Super green, super green. Okay, super green, super green, super green. green. So yeah, uh, it comes out August thirteenth. Um, I know you know kids will be out of school, so you guys can <laughs> you guys can go watch it. So. Uh, Jules, you got any more trailers? Yeah, actually, just w- just recently released is the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part One trailer um, teaser. Yeah, Ooh. that's true. Yeah, oh, it was. Te- yeah, it was a teaser. Ooh. Well, it was actually kind of like a um, a uh, propaganda trailer teaser trailer because it, it reminded me very much of like how you know Starship Troopers or like the the yeah. Um, the RoboCop, yeah, films yeah, those had, kind had of like yeah, those yeah. type of things. So it was like, ooh, it, it, it was really kind of like eerie and. Um, I I definitely love that route that they went with that stuff, mm-hmm. showing like actual like a teaser type of thing. They mm-hmm. went with like a propaganda film because pretty much the third movie is like a revolutionary war. Mm-hmm. So I mean. That was actually pretty smart on the uh, marketing people. So it was, yeah, it was it was a good it was a it good was trip. Yeah, it was it was creepy too a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, a little little creepy. You, you have this. Listen, I've never seen. I didn't see the first two movies, but just from the outside looking in, you have this old white guy dressed in all white, talking really creepy like, and then there's just just young looking man to the side. What's that supposed to be like? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, well, you want me to watch this movie, but I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm not taking my kids to this. So, uh, well, yeah. yeah, I I, uh, I was talking to to, to Mike uh, about this, and he's like, well, I don't even really watch any of the Hunger Games. What do you think? And I, and, you know, the the best way that I could describe the Hunger Game experience is I haven't read the books. Um, my wife has, but I, you know, I went into the theater watching part one, going, well, you know, you know, what are you going to show me? And midway through the movie, I was like, whoa, and it kind of really hooked me. Um, same thing with part two. I was like, I wasn't super excited about it. She was because she read the books. Um, and I went in and I was like, well, and then, you know, again, it did it did it to me again midway through the movie. And then especially towards the end, I was like, what is what? And so, I don't know. Uh, I'm in for uh, this next uh, installment. Um, it's going to be exciting. If you haven't seen any of the Hunger Games movies, um, give it a chance and um, check do them it, out. Do it for Jennifer Lawrence. Do it for Jennifer Lawrence. Do it for Jennifer Lawrence. Um, and lastly, Brandon, do you have anything else? Anything okay. Possibly that maybe was released this week, a trailer that maybe uh, plucks at our heartstrings and and we would might want to talk about right now. All right, people, I'm gonna get to it. The new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie or trailer came out this week. Uh, showed a little bit more. Showed uh, Shredder. Mm-hmm. It showed the turtles a little bit more. It showed more Megan Fox. <laughs> I am still against this movie it did not change my opinion about it it looks worse the fact that they put dubstep over the trailer it's just oh my god i just yeah. it, uh, turtle turtles don't have lips okay like it's just i i can believe them talking mm-hmm. i can believe them being ninjas <laughs> <laughs> i can believe them being <laughs> talking <laughs> turtle <laughs> ninjas <laughs> okay and eating pizza okay yeah. i can't believe that they got lips okay it's yeah. just, it just they don't look right it's just yeah, it looks they, like Transformers. They, it looks like if Transformers were shooting, if Transformers happened in Chicago, Ninja Turtles was happening at around the same time in New York City. Like it's just, it just has that Michael Bay feel to it. Jules, I have a, I have a favor to ask you. Mm-hmm. Can you go back a few episodes and insert what I said about said producer right here? Fuck <laughs> Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I believe I just did. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to waste another breath yeah. on that. I, I I completely agree with you, Mike. I do. I feel like 
<laughs> why? Just well, yeah. why? I and mean, you know, I, I I I I don't mean to sound like this uh, this hate machine that we have here about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I mean, it, come on, guys, it, it's it doesn't have a leg to stand on. Um, not just because of the lips, and not because of just the horrible CGI, but I just you know I. Uh, the, you know what Brandon's saying is it, it just it feels like a Transformers movie, even the way that they were talking in the trailer. Um, anyways, this is what I'm going to attempt to do right now, guys. All right, I'm going to put all my hate aside. I'm going to put all my haterade. I'm going to stop drinking this haterade, okay? Because you'll be sipping a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to try to find good in this movie. And this is what I'm going to say, okay? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are turtles that are ninjas. And we saw a lot of ninja moves in the trailer that made me happy. And the Foot Clan did some ninja moves, which was pretty cool. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to try to keep an open mind about this. Um, I know that it's attached to Michael Bay. I know that the, they changed what the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles look like. I know that Megan Fox has one line in the trailer. And if you actually watch it, I don't really think she's actually mouthing what she's actually saying. Take a look. It sounds really weird. Maybe it's just her lips. I don't know. However, with that being said, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a Ninja Turtle movie. No, it, it's not. Okay, <laughs> it is not. It really isn't. It has that. <laughs> it does not have the feel of a Ninja Turtle movie. If you took out Ninja Turtle movie out of it or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and put oh. something else, that's what it pretty much be like. Because it's not Ninja mm. Turtles. And the sad part is you're going to have like these people whose Transformers like, oh my God, Transformers was the best movie this year. People <laughs> no. go out to watch I know this people. Movie. No, I know people. That oh, his initials su- are E and no. B. All right. <laughs> yeah, so I'm super excited about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I saw his Facebook. <laughs> he is super excited Well, I'm just about saying it. that the people out there like that exist. And so, you know what? <laughs> All power to them. Uh, all power to them, but anyways, um, that's 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 a that's the last trailer. That's the the most recent trailer that we were very distraught about. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, when does it come out, Brandon? I hope never. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Uh, all right, guys, let's wrap this thing up. Um, anybody have anything to say? Uh, um, okay. I'm sad to okay. say it. <sighs> Transformers comes out on Friday. <laughs> Watch it if you want. I don't care. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Okay, you know what? Like we have so much negativity towards the end of our episode. Let's bring it. Let's bring it back up a little bit. Okay, I have some information. We we now have a Facebook page, so just like us at uh, Two Nerds and a Dude, we'll continue to post updates and uh, news uh, segments that we see. Comment, like, uh, share, re. Uh, not, not I was gonna say retweet, but just uh, let that's us, coming soon. Let, yeah, like let us know what you like. Uh, we also for those who do not uh, have access to an iPhone or an iPod or a podcast or a computer or our. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. they do have computers. Oh, okay. But basically, I hope. Yeah. We are now on YouTube. So, like, if you, you can't, if you can't, uh, de- like, listen to us uh, through the Potomac website, just go to YouTube, uh, search for Two Nerds and a Dude. We have our playlist set up. All of our episodes are, are there. Uh, we're just trying to be more accessible to our fans, our eight, nine fans. Nine fans. <laughs> but we're getting there. We're growing. Which we appreciate, guys. Yeah, I mean, we really appreciate it, guys. The fact that you know, I, I get some feedback from some of my friends, and you know, we, we're getting some uh, mail. I lied. We're not getting any mail, but we're you know, we I, I am getting some feedback, and we do appreciate everything that you send us. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, we really do appreciate it. Jules, uh, what do you got? Well, uh, if you listen this far, I got a little special prize for you guys. Us here at Two Nerds and a Dude are going to have our very, very first contest. Yeah. Yay. At, at the end of every one of our episodes that you guys have listened to so far, we play a song that is directly related to a movie. Um, if you can name the movie and be the first to email us or direct Instagram us the eight movies, you will win two free movie tickets to either Regal or AMC. So, guys, go back to the episodes, listen carefully, and send us your answers. Uh, may the odds be ever in your favor. Also, by the way, the rules of this contest will be posted on our show notes with more information um, in case you guys missed it. But anyways. So listen up. You listen to our podcast. Figure out what song applies to what movie. You win two tickets to a movie. Possibly Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know. <laughs> it's your life. Do what you want. Thanks for listening, guys. You have a wonderful week. We'll be back next week with more information and whatnot. So we love you. And more tidbits. And more tidbits. Hashtag tidbits. Nice.
are hot. We are recording the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, and the mouth. Mm. May the force be with us, guys. Let's do this. <laughs> Bring it in, guys. Come on. Let's get a good, good episode going. Two nerds and a dude on three. Two nerds and a dude on three. One, two, three. Two three. nerds and a dude. dude. Oh. Two nerds and a dude. Oh. Damn. Come Liz, on. Have no. you ever part of any team sports? Define sports. Okay. <laughs> No. All right, no, sorry. Right, let's go again. Come on, let's bring, bring the energy back. Bring the energy back. Oh, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it, guys. <laughs> let's do this. Two nerds and a dude on three. Two nerds and a dude on three. Two nerds Two and a dude. dude. Yes. Yeah. I didn't say. I didn't even count down, guys. Two nerds and a dude, dude and three. Okay. Oh, yeah. That was, I thought that was three. I, I don't say it three times. I say <laughs> I count down. One, two, three. Are we going on three or one, two, three, go? <sighs> On three. So okay. it's one, two, two nerds, and or how about on two? One, no, two nerds, and a dude. Because then you're going on two. Well, two nerds and a dude on two. Two nerds and a dude on two. One, two nerds dude and a dude. dude. Yeah. yeah. Yes. All right, let's start this podcast. We are back. <laughs>